Dean, we're standing here with the brand new Rotax 915 IS engine. What's, what's new about this engine? What's exciting about it is a lot of people are in favor of what they get with a 914. It's a turbocharged engine. You can carry horsepower to a lot higher altitude. So when they came out with the 912 IS, you know, a lot of people said, well, it's about time. Now when do we get the turbocharged one? So now Rotex is working on it. They officially announced that they're working on the project. It's about two years out, which has you know, got everybody kind of good. But it's exciting because it's 135 horse maximum. 127 max continuous, so that puts it right in the range of like a 0235. So when you start thinking about some of the airplanes, the kit airplanes in this field that were originally designed for an 0235, this engine is going to be perfect for those. Think of RV3s, RV4s, RV9s, airplanes like that. This will provide enough power to work those kind of airplanes and carry that horsepower to a much higher altitude than any of the previous engines on those airplanes have. Then you add to that the reliability that we get from Rotax. You add to that the smoothness we get from the Rotax. Electronic fuel injection engine, so you're a lot more efficient. There's a lot to be excited about. What is the advantage of having a turbocharged engine in this segment of the market, the market that is often described as being the low and slow market? There's a little more variety than that in this market. Yeah, you're right. For light sport especially, it's low and slow market. But this isn't aimed at the light sport. I mean, there are very, very few light sports that are going to be able to make use of this engine. This is going to be more for the amateur built experimentals that are going to be going higher and faster, people that want to cruise cross country. Me personally, that's my kind of flying. You know, go long cross country, at, you know, go on an adventure, see new places, meet new people, and things like that. So you want to be able to get up into the teens and cruise efficiently to be able to do that. Um, yeah, you can come down low when you want to, but that's not primarily where this engine's going to live. Talk about some of the, the performance specifications that you're looking for out of this engine. Okay. Uh, they're hoping to stick with the same 2,000-hour TBO. They're not sure that that's going to happen yet, but that's, that's what the target is. It's 135 horsepower for takeoff, and it will maintain that kind of horsepower level all the way to 15,000 feet. So if you're operating out of Leadville, Colorado or something, you're going to get 135 horsepower for takeoff there. Mass continuous, 127 horsepower, and that's at 5,500 RPM. Fuel burn, we don't have any data on that yet. But based upon what we know about the 914, we're probably looking at like six to seven gallons per hour for fuel consumption. The big thing with the turbocharged engine is that you're maintaining horsepower to a much higher altitude. So instead of anything that's naturally aspirated, you're losing that power as soon as you leave the ground and you start climbing up. And that's why they've added the intercooler on it too, so that when you get the heating from the turbocharging, you can still get the full horsepower from the engine up at those high altitudes. Um, have you had anybody looking at this engine already for OEM or for replacement? A number of OEMs that have been talking about how do I get a higher horsepower engine for a long time now. So there are a lot of them that are going to be very excited about working on these. I won't name any names because there are some challenges to different airplanes because this is pretty dramatically different than what the IS was as far as how you mount it up and what you have to fit inside the airplane. So there will be some pretty big challenges for some airframers to use it. But uh, with the performance that it's going to have, there's a lot of incentive to do the work. Is it going to be single lever like fade at control? Close, yeah. The only lever that you have is for the throttle. So if you consider it fully automatic other than the throttle lever, yes, yes. Great. Well, Dean, thanks very much for talking with us on AeroTV. Thank you. Aero TV is brought to you by Now certified Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B ATX100 and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at AspenAvionics.com Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft.